Initial reaction to trades is often bad. Poor Randy Galloway for writing in the moment how Jimmy Johnson and Jerry got fleeced in the Herschel Walker trade. Now, to be honest, I am not real proud about my initial analysis about the Mabry trade from Dallas to Chicago. My overall take on that was it was not really good for anybody. Well, that was wrong. And when I'm wrong, I say I'm wrong. When I'm wrong, I say I'm wrong. Now, with the WNBA draft coming up, I want to take a re-look back at this four-team deal after the dust has truly settled. The first thing that now sticks out is how this deal has a chance to be truly a catastrophic trade for Chicago and Phoenix and how New York and Dallas might have fleeced these teams. The devil is always in the detail, so let's take a look. First, Phoenix. This organization is a mess and this deal reflects that. It has only been a year since the Mercury gave up their number one pick in 2023, which has turned out to actually be the number five pick in this draft to get to Shields. It is pretty obvious they have regrets about this trade, but wait, it gets worse. They decide they must get to Shields off their books so they can re-sign Sophie Cunningham, Brittany Griner, and Diana Taurasi. So they ship her out, but pay dearly to do this. The price tag being they gave the Liberty the swap rights to their first round draft pick in 2025. Why could this be such a big deal? Well, Caitlin Clark and Paige Beckers are eligible for the WNBA draft in 2024, but due to the COVID bonus year, they could actually delay their entry into the WNBA draft until 2025. Now you might tell me that's highly unlikely, and I would ask you, why would they be in a rush to come to the WNBA? In fact, I could make the argument that Aaliyah Boston and Diamond Miller are both making mistakes by entering this year's WNBA draft. Why? Because NIL changes everything. If you're a high profile NCAA athlete, then you should try to stay in as long as possible at your school and make that NIL money. If your school does not have a strong NIL program, then transfer to somewhere where you can get paid. We'll call this the Angel and Cavender plan. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand the lure of pro ball for Boston especially, as playing college ball stinks for her, as she's getting doubled and triple teamed and being called for fouls that are soft as tissue. But the WNBA deals for rookie players is just so bad, I don't see why anybody would want to leave college if they still had eligibility left. This is even if you have potential injury issues like Diamond Miller or Paige Beckers with their knee situation. It still makes no sense as the WNBA garbage rookie contracts are not guaranteed. In 2023, picks one through four will make only 75K for the season. Picks five through eight, 71K. And 9 through 12, 68K. All second round picks, 65K. Third round picks and undrafted free agents are locked in at 62K. Combine these garbage salaries with the fact that the conditions are often better in college versus the WNBA. Chicago trains in a recreational facility. All teams fly commercial. Gina Oriyama was jokingly recruiting Stewart during her free agency. Stewie's response was, at least if I go back to Yukon, I'd be flying charter. But again, with all things, it usually comes down to money. And for a high profile player, the money is better in college. It was estimated that the Miami Cavender twins make around $1.1 million since NIL came to being. Their manager confirmed that figure was close in July 22. Now to be fair, the twins are a cottage industry as they have it down to a fine art with their Instagram, YouTube, and everything else. But even with their corporatized, streamlined production line, Angel Reese is now the number one female basketball player for NIL deals. Now, are you telling me that Boston wouldn't be able to match or come close to matching the NIL deals that Reese has gotten while playing an extra year at South Carolina? She's very likable. She was great in the press conference after the loss to Iowa, which is not easy after a devastating loss. Ask LeBron about that. It would be a natural. Her playing the good guy to Angel Reese's villain persona who dared to taunt America's 
three-point shooting sweetheart Caitlin Clark. It would be a natural that Boston could be the good guy when they have their SEC showdowns with LSU. Liz Kitley and Ricky Jackson have decided to take advantage of the five-year option. Jackson was even benched by her coach for disciplinary reasons, and she's coming back. So in my humble opinion, the 2025 draft has the potential to be loaded. So back to the Mercury. They have an aging Diana Taurasi, BG returning, and an unhappy Diggin Smith who hates the coach. Management looked at this and thought, hmm, we're set up for some big long-term success here. Yes, we must give a swap pick to the Liberty so that we can dump Diamond to Shields 155k salary and make sure we can bring back Sophie Cunningham at 150k who played well at the five but presumably this option will be gone now with BG returning as well we'll bring back to Rossi for another two seasons at 234k a season it absolutely makes no sense if you're going to give to Rossi a Kobe type send-off with a max deal then at least embrace the rebuild but instead you swap out your pick with the Liberty, who might be pretty good in 2025 if they're able to re-sign Stewie, Jones, and Inescu. And I'm sure that won't be a problem for the Liberty as players seem to love to sign for them in Vegas for a minimum salary. I wonder why. Anyway, imagine if the Liberty do re-sign their stars and then they get the number one pick in the lottery courtesy of the Mercury who they switched their pick for as they had a horrible season with the aging Diana Taurasi. For the Liberty, this would be a little bit of a win, I would say. It would sort of be like when the Lakers scored worthy after they'd won the championship or the Celtics when they were lined up to take Lynn Bias before his shocking and tragic death. Now for Chicago. Oh, the setup of coach and GM. It can go well at times. Again, Jimmy Johnson in Dallas, but my God, it can go awful at others. Yes, looking at you, Stan Van Gundy, Doc Rivers, and Bill O'Brien. Now, James Wade feels that he can take any team and his coaching staff, which is very strong, is able to make that team respectable. And then by having a respectable playoff-bound team, That will allow him to sign free agents that will put them over the top. Now, in truth, I do respect that he is trying to work the problem and build a team instead of doing the usual tanking and will be awful and then try to rebuild. It must be asked, though, was landing Candace Parker just a one-off in their history as the Sky previously in their past have been more known for losing high-profile players such as Deladon and Fowles and now Parker and Vandersloot versus signing a free agent, which in the case of Parker was the hometown girl coming back to win a championship for her hometown team. In my opinion, Wade has given up way too much to get Marina Mabry. He's given up the number five pick in the 2023 draft and the number one pick to Dallas in the 2025 draft. The potential of losing out on Caitlin Clark or Paige Beckers is too much. I like Mabry, and she put up numbers when Arike Agumawale was out at the end of the regular season. But during the playoffs, she was not able to be as impactful when the Suns game planned against her. Her salary of 200 k for the next three years is okay, but she's really a number two or number three star player on most teams that have playoff or championship aspirations. So finally, that leaves us with Dallas. Am I going to have to make an apology like Randy Galloway to Greg Bibb? I don't know if you've seen my previous video after he fired Vicky Johnson, but I crushed him. He is stockpiling picks with Alicia Gray trade, and now this one. Dallas is well set up to get players. So am I going to be Randy Galloway in a few seasons? I don't think so, because I don't think he's able to draft the way Jimmy Johnson did in the day. But you can be sure, if I wind up being wrong, I will come out and say I'm wrong. This video outlines the Greg Bibb management of the wings. Click on it if you'd like. If you've watched the video for this long, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel as it helps the channel grow. Thank you.